Well, you've done. Welcome to CCL TV. TV made by the industry for the industry. But who are CCL? Well, CCL are an independent and mutual third party logistics service provider and custom clearance specialist. From e concept to e logistics for e commerce, CCL has the e solution. Now, joining me today is Jake from Fortum International. He's the MD there. Jake, thanks so much for being with us today. How are you? Yeah, really well. well thank you. Excited to uh, to speak with you guys. Well, yeah, you've got your event this week, which we'll come back to. But to begin with, can you just tell us a bit about the company and, and your role there? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So we we run trade shows internationally now. Um, I joined back uh, between three and four years ago um, when we were predominantly just a UK trade show firm. Um, since then, we've sort of gone international. And, and actually, the show that we've got next week was, was the show I started um, back in 2019. It's really been at the forefront for our international expansion as well. So it's gone from being a, a standalone show in London to now running all across the world in Frankfurt, the US, and, and obviously still in London. Uh, uh, sort of going on from there and, and really like you say and uh, one of the big areas is the, the logistics within it which is why uh, it's really really exciting to speak with someone like yourself who's, who's at the forefront of the industry. <laughs> so how did you get into managing these global events? Yes yeah, so it was, it was really by chance so um, I started working with the company down in Cornwall um, and like I said when I first started it was just running events out of Birmingham um, and London we had an office in Bristol and Cornwall um, and the company's just exploded so we, we've gone from those two offices to having offices all throughout the UK, Europe and into the US and, and just happened to, to join at the right time um, so it's been been quite a, a fortunate fate um, chance to, to get into that and now sort of I work globally and, and travel across the world with the shows as well. And tell us more about the White Label Expo, what are delegates going to benefit from, from going, what, what's the benefit of, of exhibiting there? Yeah, absolutely. So that the show started back in 2019. The, the idea of it was a an online retail sourcing show. Um, so if somebody wanted to go and set up an online brand, for example, they could come down, meet with suppliers from any industry, from fashion apparel to health and supplements, cosmetics. Um, and what we were really fortunate to do is we adapted with all of the challenges that came with that. Um, and obviously with the, the pandemic, it really spurred on the whole online e-commerce marketing and people purchasing online. Um, so it's gone from a show where it was just really sourcing to now all the challenges that any company selling online faces. And, and that's right from independent sellers um, through to companies selling on Amazon, eBay, Shopify, all the way through to your large high street brands who are now also making that change to sell online. Um, so we have anyone that goes from sourcing, manufacturing, producing the product right the way through the companies that can um, stock and distribute the products right the way through to even um, tracking customer success um, and marketing to them. So it really is a, a full turnkey solution now. Mm -hmm. But how, how did that affect Fortum International? If you launch this, this event in 2019 and then obviously the pandemic hits, there's you know, repercussions, it must have been a difficult time for you. It, it, it was, but to be honest, we, we actually benefited massively from, from the pandemic in, in a weird way. Um, like I said, all of the clients that we had started working with um, were tapping into this e-commerce world um, and they were all working on all the problems and challenges that people were facing while selling online. Um, so they were all really at the forefront of the e-commerce boom mm -hmm. before we got pushed into doing it. So we were probably one of the very few events organizations that actually opened six new offices globally and, and managed to actually take our trade shows and, and launch them into new areas just because there's been so much pent up to demand um, and I think as well on top of that um, it, it, it's been it, it's been quite interesting and almost reinvigorating to be in the industry because uh, I think now there's never been more demand for people to want to get back out and meet to people face to face to to go out and see their clients they've been sort of stuck at home in in bedrooms on zoom okay. calls um, and they haven't had that interaction that people actually want um, and there's a whole other reason so for example 
that the main reason that someone would go to a trade show uh, as a visitor is they're currently dissatisfied with the service they're getting. Now, if you look at all the disruption that's been caused by the pandemic, there's been a huge amount of dissatisfied people um, who want to go to an event and, and see who's out there, what other options there are, if companies they're working with are no longer trading because of the pandemic. Um, and actually getting to meet someone face to face tells you so much more about the business than it does mm -hmm. just going online and seeing them. Um, so it's actually been it's been an odd one. Like you tell people that you're in face to face events and they think of the worst. Yeah, uh, but actually, yeah. it's, it's been a really good time to be in that industry because everyone is really positive and wants to get back and are willing to adapt and change and, and, and sort of develop what they do, um, which is exactly what we did. And, and part of the reason that we went so international with this is that you can adapt to all the different markets, work with people as they come out of the pandemic and, and plan for their future as their exit strategy. So what do you see for the future? I mean, do, do you see this digital physical events happening? You know, is that going to is that is that the future? Is it going to be a hybrid way of, of doing those? Yeah, in, in all honesty, I, I don't think so. Um, the, the reason being and, and this is the reason I'm in I'm in this industry in the first place is that it gives them the other other side of it. So there, there are so many ways that you can get digital traction, all of the social media that's out there, all of the websites. Um, again, video interviews, talking TV channels like this, where you get the digital exposure. And I think one of the mistakes that a lot of events companies made was they tried to transition and do a digital version of what we do. Um, and, and absolutely, look, the clients we work with, we do help them on a digital front. We do have social media that we market through. We have our website, digital show guides and, and interviews like this. We can put blog content on our website. But actually, the fundamentals of, of what we do is that face to face physical interaction. And I think that will never go away. Um, re realistically, I think it's probably going to come more and more important the more digital everything else becomes. Um, because as we move away from it, that physical interaction is, is still vital for the organisations we work with. Well, the, the few events that, that we've been to as things are getting back to normal, you can really feel that people are so happy to be back face to face. So, yeah, there, there's a real buzz around those, those physical events. Um, specifically, e-commerce and supply chain, like delegates and exhibitors, what, what can they get out of coming to the White Label Expo? Yeah, absolutely. So really now that the show has grown to the stage where it is, where it's a full turnkey solution. So whether it's somebody that's just starting up in the industry and they need to find that first product supplier, whether they're looking to scale up and start selling internationally or whether it's a challenge with importing their products um, or whether it's distribution, marketing. Again, really, we, we now luckily cater for pretty much every single problem within that um, and, and what we're trying to do as we grow is, is actually look, see where the next challenges are coming um, and make sure that we've got people who are at the forefront of that who can go out and, and help with those problems um, and it really is a scalability thing I think look, that the industry that the e-commerce industry we're going into is still pretty young it, it's been there for a long time but it's only now that you see the consumer changes where actually e-commerce purchasing is, is almost higher than it is in person. Um, and that comes with a whole range of challenges for the small businesses, but also for the largest, most established brands in the world. And, and everyone is trying to adapt at the minute. So um, we are in a very fortunate state where we can, can really cater for most issues. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, showing, showing the challenges to people and, and your answers to them and the opportunities from that is, you know, it's a different way of targeting, isn't it? And, and you're giving yeah. solutions before the problem arises. That, that's exactly it. And, and again, we're, we're really just a platform for the organisations that have those answers. And, and, and that's what we've always tried to do is, is look, find those people who are at the forefront of the industry, put them on a platform where they can talk about their solutions, their, their problems that they're helping companies overcome. And hopefully, look, just raise awareness about those challenges and, and make people aware that there are organisations who can tackle that for them. And, and the whole point of this is, look, you don't need to face these problems alone. There are companies out there who can help you with all of that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Jake, can you tell us a bit about sustainability and your thoughts around um, B2B global e-commerce sustainability challenges? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And, and, and that's actually part of the reason we've, we've grown the show. Um, so we, we've launched 
alongside the White Label Expo, we've got the Retail Supply Chain and Logistics Show. Um, now, part of the reason we launched that is one, yes, to face uh, all of the problems that businesses are facing in that change where they were able to bulk send items to stores and then distribute from there. Now they have to individually send items direct to consumers. And obviously that has huge impacts both for business and climate. Um, and we've got a lot of organizations who are helping with both areas of that. Um, but we're taking it one step further as well. So we've got um, a packaging show and a responsible packaging show so looking at when items are broken down and sold individually how are they packaged how is everything being sourced sustainably how can you minimize the impact and the amount of time and distance that products have got to be distributed through and there's some really exciting technologies coming out um, and even sort of micro fulfillment centers where products are being able to be distributed from the closest store to the home um, as well as obviously like just minimizing the amount of actual packaging that's in place um, but no, that, that's one of the key problems we're looking to, to find companies that can tackle at the moment. And I guess at the expo, we'll be able to, to see and learn a lot more about that and, and how we can help. Uh, absolutely. And, and in fact, one of the awards that we are doing at the show is, is around sustainability and, and how people can have a, a lesser impact on the environment. Excellent. That's great. Well, we'll, we'll be looking out for that while we're there. Thank you. Um, now, lastly, what are your short, mid and long term strategy goals at, um, for Fortum International? Yes, it's a good question. And, and, and to be honest, it's, it's actually been, like I said, really exciting. So um, the, the show has just expanded at, at a much quicker rate than, than we had anticipated. So the industry is, is, is exploded and, and and sort of we've adapted with that um, and really what we're trying to do is be as fluid as possible so that we can keep up with the trends look at where the demand changes are um, and, and ultimately look we want to be the the largest and the most successful online retail sourcing show um, and really be fluid enough to keep up with the changes in demand I mean that the next sort of medium term goals are to, to open up uh, more global locations so I think in the last year or so we've gone like I said from London to then incorporating the America we've got two shows over there we've also got a show in Europe um, but we want to then also bring in an Asian show um, as an organization we've just opened an office in Singapore so it'd be great to get more of our events out there um, the, the long-term side it, it really uh, we're expanding at such a, a quick rate. Um, we're, we're only able to sort of hit short term to medium term goals. And then really it's gonna be hard to see um, if we had tried to predict where we were a year ago to where we are now. I mean, I think we're about four times larger than we expected to be. Um, so it's pretty exciting and we're just sort of on for the ride at the minute. That's amazing. Well, we can't wait to get there and, and see it for ourselves and watch you guys grow. Um, before you go, we do often ask uh, everyone a, a question about if you were stranded on a desert island, what yeah. music or book would you take with you? And it's not allowed to be the White Label Expo program. Yeah, the catalogue. It, it is a great read, so um, <laughs> that would have been my answer. Um, so there's there's an album we have, and it's it's pretty diverse in the office. So we we have a, a pretty pretty diverse group of people that we work with and, and there's a pretty exciting album um, we haven't published it yet but it's got all the different songs from all the people in the office uh, with some great karaoke ballads in there which no I'll definitely way! Through. Um, so that that would be be the album I take um, but uh, also what I really wanted to to understand from, from you guys as well look you're at the forefront of the industry you've you sort of got your finger on the pulse so to speak It'd be great to see look, where you guys see this industry going and, and if you've got any ideas on look, where you think maybe the market trends would be for next year for us. Um, so look, is there any, any way you guys could think of? Well, actually, I, I was going to ask you about your thoughts around CCL TV being there because we have done a few events now. Um, and, and we've taken them to, to logistics exhibitions and conferences. And, you know, it, people are often quite surprised that we're there. But, you know, we, we're growing and we're becoming more present. And it's so great to kind of share views and opinions from industry leaders around the industry. And I, I think, you know, next year it's just going to be bigger and better and, and we'll be growing, you know, at the same time as you. And it'll be great to chat to you at the event and talk about how we can help each other and we can make CCL TV and the WLE um, Expo even more uh, a collaboration for both of us. 
course. Yeah, of, of course. And like I say, I think it'd be great to, to get more people involved, see if we can have almost a panel discussion um, as this goes and, and develops further. Um, and also looking on the international scale, is it, it'd be great to see you guys in, in more locations and interviewing people from across the world. Yeah, definitely. Well, we, we were actually in Miami last week for the WMX Americas event, um, which was really successful. And again, next year, they, they've got one actually in Dubai in May, and then they've got the Miami one again next year. So yeah, things like that, hopefully just onwards and upwards. But it'd be great to catch up with you at, at your event, and we can talk about how we can work together more. Of course. No, I look forward to, to seeing you down there. I love the way you just turned it around then. I was not expecting that. <laughs> All right, that's that's what we do. Keeping me on my toes. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's always been been great speaking with you guys. Like I said, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing you down in person and and actually showing you the event. Absolutely, I can't wait. So we'll see you there, and thank you so much for joining us here on CCL TV. And remember, Jake, that CCL are much more than packages. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>